Hey guys, this is Captain Frugal reporting for duty, and I'm going to give you the top and bottom three comics and what I've read in between for October 4th, 2022. Oh! Right, guys, you know the drill, but if you don't, if you don't know the drill, I take the comics that I've read of the week, which can't be all of them. I read what I have time to read as well as funds allow, because let's be honest, a lot of them come out there. And I give you my opinions on the top three and the bottom three to help you figure out what you should get and what you should avoid. But once again, these are my opinions. You might have different ones, and that's OK. Go ahead and share those in the comments section and we'll jump in here and see. So anyway, I'm going to go top three bottom three and all that's in between so let's see what are we going to start with today let's go with the top the ones that i think that you should get now i will say this week was rather surprising so let's go with my number three first my number three was the hulk or just hulk in general number nine i gave it a 7.5 out of 10 that's once again hulk number nine now, i haven't been the biggest fan of this series which sort of surprises me i like the art style don't get me wrong but i just haven't really cared for this direction of the hulk but this issue was a little different i thought it was solid and by the way you hear my papers rattling <laughs> i thought it was a solid issue i really like the starting of this story actually where there's a, a virtual therapy session if you will that was my favorite part of this issue but throughout this issue like the others were solid art and i like where this story is going this is a good starting point for a new reader of the hulk series if you haven't been reading this maybe you're like me wasn't real keen to this direction this is a new story arc and this has been pretty interesting i'd like to see where it's going so once again that's hulk number nine now, my number two makes me a little bit happy to see this getting this high up on there because this one is one that could take a dive at any moment, in my opinion, but it's relatively surprising. And that's Captain America Sentinel of Liberty number five. I gave this issue a 7.9 out of 10. Yes, I know I'm Captain America biased, but if anything, I think I judge Captain America books harder because of that very thought here. This is an interesting story. And the ending of this particular issue really had me wanting to read more, which in my opinion is the mark of a good comic book. When it's a good comic book, it makes you go, ooh, what's on the next page? Oh, there's not a next page. I got to get the next issue. And I think this one does a pretty good job. The art has been solid in this. The lettering could be a little better. If I was to pick on anything, really, it would be the lettering. There was a couple panels where it was sort of hard to follow which word balloon you were supposed to read next. So the letterer could have done a better job. But still, we're talking to seven point nine out of ten i think i'm enjoying this captain america sense of liberty and starting to get a little bit of hope that it won't end up in the garbage Whew, i sure hope that's the case because we've needed some good captain america for a long time all right so my number one pick is ready this one really surprised me too and there's some really good reasons why in my opinion that was savage avengers number six i gave this an eight out of ten it's really you know to me i enjoy 2099 characters uh, I didn't enjoy all the 2099 storylines that we've had, especially some of the ones recently have fallen a little flat, in my opinion. But this one has been starting off with a bang here. It's really nice seeing the Punisher 2099 and written well. And this next thing I'm going to say here might be a little divisive here, but bear with me here, please. Just And if you disagree, by all means, let me know in the comments. But I think Miles Morales has been absolutely a pointless character in the 616. He was a good until they brought him to the 616. And when they did that, they diminished what made him special, what made him stand out. He was just another Spider-Man. And so it really, it, down, it took him down a peg. Maybe, hear me out here, maybe they should just kill him off and make him a Deathlock. Because in my opinion, having Miles Morales' Deathlock series would be a much more interesting series than what we've, you know, we've been seeing in, in, with Miles in stories so far. Now, as a, in my opinion, this is the most interesting Miles I think we've saw in a long time since he moved from the moved into the six one six, 
this story has a lot of action. The art's pretty good. Not my favorite art style, but it's pretty good, and I think it's fitting for the story. And this is a great starting point for anybody that hasn't been reading the series. I really, really like this issue. Uh, if, if, not, if you weren't aware, Marvel did lose the rights to Conan. They had the rights for a little while, so Conan is no longer in the story. He was left off in the last issue, and now we're moving forward. And I don't think that's a bad thing, necessarily. I think they were struggling with with what to do with him and mix the time periods. Whereas now I think they're more free and open. And I'm telling you, I'm really enjoying this version of Deathlock for some reason. I like Miles as a Deathlock. I want to know, do you like Miles as a Deathlock? What do you think? Am I wrong there? Or would you rather see him as a Deathlock as well? All right. Now we're going to go to the bottom. Before we go to the bottom, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to these wonderful people here. They're supporting us on Subscribestar and Patreon. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. And speaking of impossible, if you want to really help me out, please, if you're going to help support the channel, Subscribestar might be the best way to do it because uh, you have to have a minimum of people where I can even get those funds to help out the channel. And I'm a little below that. So I have funds there, but I can't access them until I have that. So all your support and help would be wonderful. It helps me keep doing this channel, doing product reviews, and I've got a lot of product reviews coming here really soon that might be interesting to you as well as continuing the comic reviews, the jokes to try to brighten your day. You know, I think we just need a little bit of that for everybody. All right, enough shilling, if you will. Let's go to the bottom, and then we're going to go to the ones that fell in between. My bottom three. All right, here we go. My number, number three, was Spider-Man number one. Now, Hold on here before you, before you get all mad at me, okay? Hear me out here. It was Legacy number 157, I believe. But now, I did give this a 7.8, or sorry, 7.08 out of 10. Just so you know, 7 is average. So, some people are going to say, oh, you're against this because a Dan Slott wrote it. I am trying to be subjective here. I am aware there may be some bias here. So, you know, bear with me here, and I'm going to try to explain my thoughts on this. First of all, I always like Bagley art. And this one is no different. We have some great Bagley art. Sadly, though, we get more of the Dan Slott style of humor. And I think that's what really hurt this issue, especially it goes on a tangent in this issue about the hyphen in Spider-Man and singing. It's just Dan Slott, he pushes the humor too far and he's not that good at it. Yes, I realize this is coming from a guy that makes dad jokes on the Internet. I get it. <laughs> okay, There is irony there. Right. But, you know, it's just the dad jokes don't, uh, you know, are there to make people cringe a little bit and have fun where the jokes in here. He's intentionally trying to be funny. And I think it falls flat. Is it just me or was it obvious, too, in this issue, if you read it, that Moreland was not there to attack Spider-Man? He was there to help from the start. So it, it's sort of once again, he telegraphed what was going. I think it would have been better if they can give that little segue of information about sending somebody over. Because I think he was trying to trick you, then there's Moreland, and then, oh, here comes another Spider-Man, he's there to help. But it was really sort of obvious, because Moreland kept trying to talk. So I think he telegraphed the, 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 that way too much and took away from the surprise. So if he didn't do that telegraph and had Spider-Man just attack him like he did, but not have Moreland try to talk and things like that, it might have sold it more. But he really failed to sell the, ha-ha, I gotcha there. So that was a, a failure in writing, and that's one of the reasons this got knocked down a peg. Great art, the dialogue needs work, and it's still a decent jumping on point issue. So if you are interested in Spider-Verse, I'm not personally a big Spider-Verse fan, but if you are, this might be worth you checking out because once again, it's still got a 7.08 out of 10. All right, my number two and the bad one was the Joker, the man who stopped laughing. Yeah, the Joker, the man who stopped laughing. I gave this a 7.1 out of 10. This was issue number one, by the way. I guess I should have said that, right? And the art is decent at best. You hear my papers rattling. That's all my notes again. The art was decent at best. The story is, is interesting. I'll say that. And I, and I don't want to give it away. There is a nice twist in this. And, and, but the thing is, once again, it was sort of obvious. I really seen it coming, and maybe that's just me. And the second story, art for the art, is not good at all in that second story. But the story has some really funny moments in that second story in the book. So, you know, it, it's pretty interesting, and especially with little things like the Joker hitting Mirror Master with a crowbar, and when he does, for the sound effect, it's Todd, Todd, Todd. That, that is brutally sadistic, 
But for some reason, I laughed out loud at that one. I <laughs> and I'm a Jason Todd fan, so wow, you know, I just thought, wow, what a what a twist to put in there. Other than that, though, that that second story was just filler, and that's sort of one of the reasons why this got knocked down to a 7.1. Is it just um, had a little bit of filler? It was a little more filler, you know, than what I would like it to be. But you, you know. <sighs> Sometimes, I, I don't know why DC keeps doing this. They keep doing these uh, two stories in one book again. And, and it seems like often the second story is just something they pull out of a drawer. So, it is what it is. Now, actually, I will, I will say, you know, that 7.1 should have been number three, by the way. And 7.08, number two. So, that Spider-Man one should have been number two. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, I wrote them backwards. Dysle dyslexia got me there. <laughs> All right, so so far we said the bottom then would have been the Joker. Uh, I mean, number three. And then number two was Spider-Man with 7.08. And then the very bottom one. And this one disappointed me a little bit because I had a little bit higher hopes for this. And it was Ant-Man number four. I gave it a 7 out of 10. So none of the books actually this week are that bad. They're all average at best. And it was a decent story. But it really wasn't anything special. They had all this. Each one of the issues previously had had a story arc uh, with a different Ant-Man. You'd think they'd bring it all together into something really good and amazing. But no, they didn't. It was, it was just okay. So, I don't know. Maybe if you get it in trade, might be the way to go on this for this four issues. Otherwise, you may just want to skip it overall. It was okay. Had nice little glimpses of interesting, but it just never really paid off really big. They're going to be doing one with the Wasp soon, too. So we see, hopefully, if that is better. And once again, it had interesting points. It just could have been a little better. And that's usually a problem when you just hire ho-hum and not hire for the best you can get. I think we're seeing that a lot right now in Marvel. Though with that said, Marvel did take all the top three positions and DC was, and Marvel was a mix at the bottom. So that really was a, a surprise here. So now the issues that were the in-between. These are the ones that didn't make it to the top or the bottom. And one of them, you ready? Was none other than, dun, 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 dun. And this one actually shocked me. It was Batman, 128. I give it a 7.3 out of 10. Yeah, I liked the cover art. I thought it was really cool. Had me interested in the story. And it was fast-paced, and it was an action-filled issue. The art was decent overall. It was just not quite hitting the top. Good issue nonetheless, not a problem. We had Dark Crisis of an Infinite Earth. I gave number 5 of 7 a score of 7.2. So number 5 of 7, I thought it was fast-paced action, solid art, and a decent story. But I think they wrote Black Adam out of character. It just didn't seem quite right to me. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not like a Black Adam know-it-all. <laughs> uh, I do like the Shazam, or should I say Captain Marvel Universe. But, uh, I don't know. He just seemed a little out of character me, to me. But that's that's me. Maybe you disagree and you thought that he was written right on point. And you know what? If you did, that's okay, too. Well, there you go. Those were the ones in the middle. So today, other than me not being able to pay attention to my numbers and get dyslexic and flipping number two and three around, those are my top three and bottom three comics. What did you think I missed? What do you think I should read? And what are you happy that I avoided? What's out there was so bad. And I don't, just for the record, go out and try to find bad comics. Hopefully, if you noticed that, I try to find some things that to try something new each week and find things that I'd find that are interesting and just update and my thoughts on the on the way it's going. My most surprised one I will say so far has been Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty. I've really been impressed with it. It hasn't really dropped the ball and failed me like I expected it to. But once again, those are my thoughts, not yours. I'd love to hear your opinions. Let me know in the comments below. If you don't mind, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. It really does help this channel. Until next time, everybody. Keep it frugal.